My name's Nell Nancy Ayotte. I'm a visual artist and writer living in Victoria, BC, working out of my home studio. My art is deeply inspired by maximalist decor, art of yesteryear and sort of a myriad of uh, cultures that I really enjoy including in my practice, sort of a kaleidoscopic look at um, the world and its diversity. I work primarily in watercolor. I'm inspired by community, fluidity, femme opulence is a term that people have used to describe my work. I mean, I find a lot of my inspiration in nature. I find a lot of my inspiration from fashion. I really like using lots of pattern and yeah, a variety of colors to convey uh, beauty and diversity. Something that I really enjoy doing is getting glimpses of other people's homes and sort of their family or community unit and including those into my pieces. It's a really interesting way to get to know um, strangers and create something wherein they can see themselves. I leave the faces out of my work. I strive to create pieces that people can sort of insert themselves into or recognize friends, families, you know, loved ones, strangers in it as well. My process, I feel like I, I work backwards. Um, I do this with writing as well, where I'll, I'll start with the last line of a story and then find my way to the beginning. Uh, my paintings are often like that as well, where I'll have sort of the image entirely done in my mind, and then it's just about taking it from, you know, behind my, my eyes onto the paper. Um, I start with pencil and move forward from there. It's always, I should say, the, the exoskeleton of the piece is in my mind's eye and then once it's on paper then I, I bring in all of the patterns and the color so it's never, it's never fully done until the page kind of takes, takes form and, and the uh, colors kind of work themselves into the mosaic that they become. I became a dental hygienist so that I could afford art supplies and it really worked out. I ended up really loving the sort of wellness and care aspect of dental hygiene and it, it did create this really beautiful bridge for me to then focus more on art. More recently I've sort of transitioned to making art full time which has been a really fantastic experience, being able to immerse myself in the creative process and sort of focus on what it is that I'm doing presently and where I hope to go in the future. I currently work under the sort of artist name girl called Alaska. 
creating under that name for, uh, I think, almost a decade now. It's become a really interesting um, and sort of really heartwarming experience to move around my home city and, and see my paintings out in the world and so much so going to people's houses for the first time and seeing them up on the wall and that's also really exciting. Uh, again, having people identify with the piece so so readily that they see themselves in it or they see their, their grandmother, sisters, friends. I recently had my first gallery show at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. I got to be a part of their small winter work series which was really exciting, sort of the first official gallery. Um, and I had my first solo show earlier, or I guess late this, this year, just a couple months ago, at Ophidia Tattoo, which is a fantastic space. Their team were so gracious to keep my art up on the wall for two whole months, so we got to see a lot of um, ink being done, and it just seemed like such a nice thing for the paintings to be able to absorb other artists and have that absorption be received.
So this piece in particular, I actually painted before I left on my trip for Japan. We went to a place called Takachiho, which is like a small kind of farming community. And while we were there, they were um, hosting a traditional Kagura dance. It was such an honor, it was such an incredible experience. I showed the, um, the dancers my work and the, the master was so excited. He just started, you know, like um, wanting to, to tell me that um, in Takachiho, the Shinto shrines specifically have dragons that go um, both ways, up and down, and it's um, meant to symbolize the like as above, so below, and and ascension, like hitting bottom before you can can rise again. He said like that's so interesting that your paintings have dragons that go both ways. On most shrines, he said that the dragons both go up. So. Um, that was just so, so fascinating, such an interesting synchronicity that would be shown also in my painting. And we were actually staying at a family's house that had a shiitake mushroom farm as well. And I realized then, I was like, oh my gosh, I actually painted the mom, the wife, like whose house we were staying at in my painting. There's a woman who's like leaning and her fingers are turning into mushrooms. So that was also a really interesting synchronistic moment. One of my friends had printed on her bag one of um, Helna Off Clint's pieces, which I'd also painted as one of the, um, the robe motifs. So it was just so wild to me to see these different aspects within the trip. Um, and some were known in that moment and some it wasn't until I came back and was like, oh my gosh, that, that, um, that print was with us the whole trip or the shiitake mushroom fingers. And um, it was just so interesting. I really love those meta moments, that synchronistic piece, I think. There is really magic in synchronicity. My name is Candice Marinick. I started tattooing a little over a year ago um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I had some really good experiences with tattoo artists and some really bad ones and I kind of liked the way the industry was moving and so I decided I wanted to be a part of that. I've been an artist most of my life, but never really found a medium that I wanted to grow into, and so tattooing has been that for me. I started at Ophidia here in June um, of this year, so I've only been here a few months, um, but I opened my books officially in March of 2022. 
Outside of tattooing, um, I went to school for marketing. I have a diploma in marketing management from Douglas College. Um, after attending Douglas College, I worked as a graphic designer briefly and went to school online for that. Um, so that kind of followed into my digital artwork experience and I worked in communications and as a graphic designer um, for the provincial government for a few years um, and realized I was more doing admin work and it was kind of stifling me a bit creatively. So I moved into public engagement and I do that full time on, this, on the side for the BC government. Um, but now I can focus all of my creative energy into tattooing, which is something I really enjoy. I'm still kind of finding my style, but I really like to take reference from Renaissance paintings um, and old surrealism paintings. Um, I have a big spot in my heart for Frida Kahlo. Historically, a bi woman, she's phenomenal and a big icon for me. There's a lot of artists that I really cherish from art history and centuries ago. Um, so I really like to incorporate some of their work into my flash um, and kind of redo them in how I would like to see them or tattoo them. Um, I also really like to play with light in my tattoos, so making sure that there's a point of reference for where the light is coming from and touching on that. And I think those fine little details are really what do it for me. There's just like a, a great sense of satisfaction in doing a tiny little face on a tattoo because it's not where you put the ink that matters, it's the clear space around the ink that kind of brings it out, like the white space if that makes sense. And it's just as important as where the ink goes. <laughs> The best thing about being an artist is that you can continually change what you're doing and get excited about new things. I'll be going from doing a super fine line piece to wanting to do more shading, to wanting to go back to super fine lines. It's definitely not the same industry that it was at least 10 years ago um, when I was graduating high school and looking at different avenues for my career. You can definitely make it your own now and you can ask for help where you need it. The self-taught community is really kind and generous, especially in Victoria, there's a really big one. And most people are willing to give you advice if you ask for it. So that's kind of my biggest thing, is if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask.
I wouldn't have this position here at the shop if I hadn't reposted something the owner, Brianna, had shared on our social media. Because um, I thought it was really neat and I, was, I love like amplifying artist work that I really enjoy. And so Brianna shared a post and then I reshared it to my story on Instagram and that's how she found me. That's kind of how it happened. Ophidia has been an amazing part of my life so far. I've met so many wonderful people and artists and we've had just such great experiences here and continue to share this space with the community. It's so loving, like right now we have um, a girl called Alaska whose name is Nell and her work is up in the studio. It's nice to see that it's a big art community in this space and it's not just tattooing. Um, and so it, it makes a big impact when you're in here.